The James Webb Telescope has finally gotten to its destination, which was the second Lagrange point, or L2. In the spring of 2002, it only needs to align its 18 mirrors, whereas teams of scientists have already planned out the years to come. Webb is going to check how black holes soak in matter and it will peek through previously unpenetrated walls of cosmic dust and see how stars are really made. Join us as we look at James Webb's telescope and examine Hawking's black hole theory. Even though the telescope was launched recently, Webb is also getting himself ready for much bigger tasks to accomplish. We're going to tell you how the new telescope might just help us find dark matter. Are we going to see other universes reflected in Webb's gold-plated mirrors? What was he really trying to achieve by launching the super telescope into space? Is it possible that the JWST and its observations could help us determine the exact expansion rate of the universe? So according to the Big Bang Theory, the universe is constantly expanding. Stars and galaxies that aren't held in place by gravitational attraction stray further and further away from each other with every passing second. If we can accurately determine the precise velocity of their movement, we'll be able to see what will take place in our Milky Way in the future, and also the past. But efforts to define the significant cosmological parameter have given us probably one of the biggest contradictions in modern day science. The expansion rate of the universe is referred to as the Hubble constant and is measured in kilometers per second. Per megaparasec, astrophysicists have developed two calculation methods, but here's the issue with that. The results achieved by different scientific teams don't correlate even a little bit. So, the first team determined the expansion rate based on the cosmic microwave background. This is the relic radiation that was a reminder from the days when our universe was still a small child, only 380,000 years old. If we were to compare it with, say, a 20-year-old, microwave background would be a picture of her as a baby born five hours ago. Therefore, through this microwave background method, the first team found that the universe expands at 67 kilometers per second per megaparasec. The second team watched how the luminosity of significant stars several million light years away from Earth shifts over time. This time, the answer they got was 74 kilometers per megaparasec. That's a significant gap. It's time for the JWST to step in. The first team's cosmic microwave background is 100 times longer than the emissions the telescope can receive. Besides that, Webb's mirror is 6.5 meters in diameter and can gather as much light as needed to catch even the littlest change in the luminosity of comparatively closer stars. This means that the second team would eventually finally discover a way to give us precise data on how quick these objects are drifting apart. But as for the question of what exactly it is that makes the universe expand, we don't have a definite answer yet. It's some unseen and omnipotent substance that takes up the entire area of space we haven't figured out yet. We're hoping that the launch of this telescope could now let the researchers produce data necessary to examine one of Stephen Hawking's most controversial theories, suggesting that dark matter is made of black holes that were created in the earliest moments of the Big Bang. According to Live Science, three astronomers have come up with a theory that tackles not only the science of dark matter, but also the formation of the biggest black holes in the whole universe. They said that some new tools, including the James Webb Space Telescope, could help them prove or disprove Hawking's theory. Astronomers revealed that black holes are born only after big stars die. Then they also collapse under the weight of their own gravity, making black holes take a whole lot of stars, which takes a bunch of normal matter. Now, scientists have found out how much normal matter is present in our universe from research on the early universe but they are convinced that there just isn't enough normal matter to make all the dark matter, which accounts for more than 80% of all the matter there is. Now, as far as the latest findings, researchers at the University of Miami and the European Space Agency looked into the theory of primordial black holes, exploring how they might solve the mystery of dark matter and maybe even other cosmological mysteries. They concluded that primordial black holes could have a big role to play in the universe by seeking the first galaxies, the first stars, and the first supermassive black holes. They also said that their observations have given them reason to believe that stars, supermassive black holes, and galaxies appear very fast in cosmological history, perhaps too fast to be accounted for by the processes of formation and growth that we can observe in the present day universe. So, astrophysicists have observed that some galaxies move as though they have way bigger masses that we can see with our equipment. This missing invisible mass is referred to as 
dark matter. And according to recent studies, there's six times more of it in outer space than all the stars and planets and cosmic dust put together. The well-researched gravitational lensing effect will be useful in helping JWST find dark matter. This effect happens when a gravitational field of a massive body curves the light traveling towards it. Compared to the Hubble telescope, Webb will be able to find far more distant gravitational lenses that'll let scientists discover fresh clumps of dark matter and calculate their masses. This will bring us one step closer to understanding what the substance really is and what it's made of. This idea is the reason behind presently happening disputes, but some astronomers assume that dark matter is something that all space lovers are familiar with. It's totally possible that prehistoric black holes could have shown up less than a second after the Big Bang. From high density areas in space, they could still be out there, unnoticed. Considering that a hole of this type isn't created due to the explosion of a star, it might even have a mass equivalent to something as tiny as a grain of sand. It was in the early 1970s when Hawking put forth his theory. But the problem is, there may be trouble spotting a primordial black hole. In 2034, space agencies will launch the LISA Gravitational Wave Observatory. This is going to find the subtlest fluctuations that massive bodies can cause while shifting. After that, LISA will hand its notes over to the James Webb Telescope, and the area is going to be thoroughly examined. Stephen Hawking is famous for another theory, one even more far-fetched than the previous one. In 2018, the attention of the scientific world was placed on his final paper titled A Smooth Exit from Eternal Inflation, co-authored by Thomas Hartog. Of course, here we're referring to a sort of cosmic inflation of the early universe. A regular explosion expands evenly in every direction, but our universe haphazardly begins expansion extremely soon after the Big Bang. In a few nanoseconds, it multiplied and went from being the size of one atom to the infinite universe we inhabit. The problem with this theory is that it claims that similar sudden expansions are a regular occurrence in different regions throughout the universe, and as a result, there's an endless number of new universes. Hawking's and his co-author actually insulted this theory in their article proving that cosmic inflation can't go on forever. So, it seems that if other universes are really out there, there's probably not a whole lot of them, and they also don't offer a wide range of conditions. To answer your questions, yes, you could have a totally different life in a parallel world, but your national identity wouldn't change. What's most believable is that scientists have caught on to a way of checking the multiverse theory. So, do we need to arm a spaceship with special equipment? Maybe it'll find proof of other universes in the microwave background. But as we mentioned, this wavelength is a hundred times longer than what the web can pick up. So you're almost helpless here, but don't worry. Though the most amazing parallel worlds must lie out there, maybe we don't have to travel to another galaxy to see them. Only time will tell whether or not the James Webb Telescope will live up to its promises or not. Now, as far as exoplanets, as of 2022, there are already over 5,000 discovered exoplanets and 2,000 more potential candidates. But if they're all uninhabitable, it doesn't matter. That's why scientists keep on ambitiously searching for habitable worlds. Here's the clue. If a planet has any living organisms on its surface, they'll definitely leave behind the usual atmospheric biomarkers. The most significant of these are molecules of water, ammonia, and methane. But the one surefire sign of life as we know it would be the presence of chlorophyll. That is all about James Webb's telescope and the search for the truth behind dark matter, for now at least. Subscribe and check out other videos on our channel if you're still curious about the mysteries of the universe. Until next time.